I've come to the last Famicom Disk System game of 1986. 34 releases, and that doesn't sound like much because, well, it isn't. But I also think it's very clear that Nintendo didn't allow anyone else to have access to development hardware. So all of those third parties got started very late. Now, Electrician is a weird game for the end of 1986. Just on the disk system, there's been Metroid, Akuma Joe Dracula, and Xanic. Games are becoming more complex. There's more things to do in them, more complicated game mechanics. Basically, video games have almost completely stopped being about score. And here comes Electrician, with gameplay that wouldn't have been out of place among mid-tier arcade hits of 1982. Electrician was originally developed for Atari 8-bit computers by Synapse Software, one of the powerhouses of early computer game development, though by the time this disk system port was released, they were dead. They ran afoul of Jack Tramiel, villain of every story about the video game and computer industry in the early 80s, and had to be bought out by Broderbund, who shut them down earlier in 1986. In Electrician, you're an electrician, and an enormous blackout has taken out power across the entire United States. To take care of this, you have to rewire eight high-rise buildings, plus travel between the cities after you complete a building. The buildings are a single screen across, but many screens tall. As you play, B wires and A jumps. So the basics of the high-rise stages are that you jump off a ladder into the space between rooms, Press and hold B and walk across that whole section. You also have to press up and down while holding B to wire up those rooms. If you wire all of the top connections in the room, the lights turn on. Complete all of the connections in the building, and a door appears in the lower right where you can exit the stage. As you're running all these wires though, there are also creatures that are roaming the crawl space in the building, and they'll eat away at the connections that you've built up and down to the rooms. If you manage to complete the circuit, then they get fried. Don't touch the zap, though. That'll still kill you. This makes the basic gameplay loop on these levels, trying to complete a power line as fast as you can, and then going back and patching up the gaps that have been created. Early on, the creatures will just crawl around on the floor, but later on, there's ones that stick to the ladder, and these spiders will make invisible webs that will get you stuck. Basically, more elaborate and nastier patterns. Sometimes, when you light up a room, a thief will jump out and run to the left. If you can get down to their level fast, then you can catch them, and they'll leave behind a random item. Ideally, you want to see bells. Those are extra lives. But they can also leave behind a pogo stick that will make you jump a lot higher, and always hit your head on the ceiling, falling straight back down. It makes all of the jumps in the game pixel perfect, and some of them it makes outright impossible. You'll wind up falling off the rooms a lot if you try to use it, and if you fall more than one story, then you die. So you don't want to get the pogo stick. Unless you get the helmet first. If you get the helmet, then you can jump through things, and the pogo stick will then make it easier to get over gaps between two rooms. So the order in which you collect them matters. When you exit the door from the high-rise building, you go to an underground stage where you have to pass through the sewers to reach the next building. These are side-scrolling stages, and here, A jumps while B turns off and on your flashlight. Why would you want your flashlight off? You wouldn't. The sewer has some blocked off walls, and creatures that will spawn in that you have to jump over. These moles will turn into something when you flash the light on them. Don't touch it, because it will still kill you. There's also a boat on the ground floor that you can climb down onto, and it will carry you further into the level. These connecting stages have a spot where you can jump directly under some major landmark, and doing so will change the image on the screen. As you do this for stages, you'll unlock different versions of those connecting stages. And if you complete all of those variations on the connecting stages, then you can get the true ending, which is just a small graphical change. The catch here is, you can't do this all at once. It'll take four or five trips through the entire game, assuming you're playing perfectly, to trigger all of these points, and that's because as you trigger them, you'll get diverted to other stages. You can save your progress toward the true ending when you get a game over, but which backgrounds you've changed is the only progression that's saved. In fact, there aren't even continues in this game. When you get a game over, you've got to start over again from the beginning. Also in the sewers, you'll find thieves occasionally, 
and I do mean occasionally, I saw one during the hour I was playing. Capturing one of them will get you an item, which can turn on all the lights in the sewer, or let you knock down walls that get in your way. All the way to the right in the sewers is another building and a door you go into, and that will take you to the next high-rise stage. When you start a stage, you have an opportunity to choose how fast the game was going to play. I was always playing on the medium setting, but at least they give you something resembling a difficulty option here. After the eighth and final high-rise stage, there isn't another connection level, so there's only seven of those. That's how you play Electrician, but as you might have already noticed, there's a lot of problems with this one. The worst aspect of it is how far you have to move to scroll the screen. You pretty much have to go right to the edge, and that means you're going to be running into enemies that you just couldn't see in time. Now that's frustrating, but then there are the bugs, and I don't mean the enemies in the game. Electrician is noticeably buggy. Like here when I'm on the boat and the screen just refuses to scroll. Or here when I climb down a ladder and pass through a solid wall. Or here where I can't jump when I'm standing on top of a ladder. Or here where getting caught in a spider web while jumping apparently counts as falling multiple stories, presumably because the jump is on a timer. This game's a real mess and it's not well regarded in Japan for that reason. It's a game that is singled out for its weak design. So here's the thing, I really wanted to like Electrician. When I saw footage of it before, I thought, oh, this could be a really cute little action game. Yeah, people seem kind of grumpy about it, but maybe it just wasn't vibing with them. And no, it is pretty poor. However, when I was recording footage of that original Atari computer version, I was going, here's the game I wanted. While the principles of the game are the same there, it plays much better. There's a lot more action and a lot more creativity with what's going on. Play that version of Electrician. That one's fun. The Famicom Disk System version? Avoid it. 